Welcome back to Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists. And today, uh, what's that smell? Mm, what's that taste? Believe you me, it's usually fake. We sit down with food stylists. Food stylists are the artists who take regular food and make it look on camera presentable. So a lot of the food you see in movies doesn't come out of the oven that way. It comes from a food stylist. So let's preheat the oven, roll camera, and listen in. Question right off the bat, is everybody drinking real water or is it all fake? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have water, we never have to sub out. Water, yeah, yeah, water is always water. Water is yeah. water no matter what. Water is water no matter <laughs> what. Isn't that comforting? It's Isn't comforting nice? to have one constant, yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that nice? Should we go around and uh, say who we are? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, I can start. Um, hi, my name is Billy Boydega, and uh, I am a food stylist. Uh, I work usually with commercials and usually with some of the big celebs in the food world. We're talking burgers, we're talking pizza, and we're talking fast food. <laughs> Hello, kitties and kidettes. My name is Glenn Klink, and I, of course, am the one behind a lot of uh, Betty Crocker meals, a lot of Campbell's soup. I do the casseroles. I do the soups. I do the homemade uh, hamburger helpers. You know, it's, it's a lot of work to make those things look tasty because by essence they are, but by look, they look like shit. So I do a lot of work with them and I have a blast. Hello, I'm Diego Libra Poop. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, I am... Beverage queen of the industry. I do hot beverages, cold beverages, any type of beverage you've ever thought of. Uh, I famously worked on the Baja Blast commercial with Taco Bell recently, where a Baja Blast turned into a fountain that I created with my team. My team is incredible. Shout out to my team. Um, thankful to be here and so excited to talk to you all about solids because I know nothing about it. <laughs> Yeah, it was so good to talk to you. Um, well, I'm Paula Myers, and I am currently a food stylist in training. Um, I am studying under Pierre LeBlanc, and Ooh, he wow. is a, teacher. a titan, a titan of the industry. Um, so I'm currently an apprentice. I'm learning all the tricks of the trade, and um, he's a food stylist for pretty much anything: movies, TV, commercials. He's done it all. He's the best in the biz. And so I'm currently living with him in Paris, and uh, we're mm. in the same hotel room, and I'm studying. Um, <laughs> and it's a one, two, three year <laughs> apprenticeship, depending on how fast I learn. So um, I'm doing that right now, and I'm learning a lot, and it's really exciting. And how many years? In, are you? Uh, two. Great. Wow. Just so last... it looks like I'm going to be on the three year track, but he won't tell me. Oh, oh, fun. Wow. Two years, same hotel room, same man. Yeah. Yeah. And I am learning a lot, not just about food stylists, but, uh, or food styling, uh, but about the man himself, um, his many quirks and his many um, <laughs> preferences, uh, both um, sexual and non sexual. Um, okay, We're okay, right I'm, so it, huh? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Hallelujah. Don't beat around that bush. Have, yeah. No, no, no. I, I went into that way too early. I, I, I shouldn't have. Oh, God, look at the mouth I have on me. I should stop. Let's be honest. We all knew it was happening. Right when yes. you said you're living in the same hotel room in France, <laughs> you it said was France a and dead we knew giveaway. it. And hotel don't rooms know are not big. <laughs> About, uh, people don't know this about food stylists. Um, it's like actresses in the 80s. You got to sleep your way to the top. Yeah. 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 I gave blowjob after blowjob to learn my tricks of the and trade. to be clear, I actually don't have to do any of that stuff. I He just tells me about it in great, great detail. Mm. Um, so, it, But he gives off a very asexual vibe, so it's very interesting. Mm. Anyway, I... Uh, I haven't talked to a lot of outside uh, mm. people besides Pierre. And recently, that's a hotel so for I'm, two years, by the way? Hotel for two years? Hotel for two years. Wow. Does he specialize, did you say, his specialization? Um, he's pretty much across the board. He has been doing like a lot of prestige uh, stuff mm -hmm. lately because he, you know, he's done commercials and everything and all that. And now he kind of wants to focus on more artistic direction. Yeah, well, like fancy I mean, meals. Yeah. We all know Pierre because he, of course, was the Italian food stylist for The Sopranos. Mm. He did the spaghetti to the gabagool. Mm. Incredible. Yeah. Amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, stuff. And, and he taught me a lot about, yeah, it, styling Italian food is different than uh, most food. <laughs> when you say you haven't talked to anyone, any outside people, mm -hmm. does that mean outside of the industry or outside of your hotel room? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Good uh, point. kind of, okay, kind of, kind of the hotel room. Um, I would say a lot of the time if I am on set, 
um, apprenticing with him, I have to go into another room and they set up a special monitor for me. It is not Video Village. It is its own thing. Okay. It's its own camera feed that they set up just for me so that I can uh, learn alongside without having to interact with all those strangers because he doesn't want them like poisoning my outlook. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It's a dangerous industry. Yeah. yeah it really dangerous. is. Yeah. Uh, dangerous. I'm Michelle Bread. Uh, I'm a food stylist. <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. If you've, seen, <laughs> if you've seen anyone eat on film, in TV, in a commercial, on stage, my fingers have probably been all over that food. Uh, <laughs> Michelle, you're a yeah. legend. You're an absolute I, legend. Thank you. Thank you. And you do not hold back from wearing gloves. You will not wear a glove. I am not wearing a glove. Finger, yeah. No, you've got to have that human touch. You have to see the fingerprints all over the food. Mm -hmm. uh, literally, figuratively, and that's kind of uh, what I've staked my claim on. It's your Hitchcock moment, seeing your fingerprint in mm -hmm. the food as they put it in their mouth. And right. that's always a fun thing. Like, I'll go to a movie, and, it, and it, we'll see, you know, pizza or even a steak dinner and I'll turn to the person next to me and I go, oh, that's bread. And they'll go, no, that's a steak. And I go, <laughs> <laughs> no. you don't understand. No, it's that's bread. Michelle bread. <laughs> what I, came first? <laughs> the job or the name? Uh, uh, the, the job Came first. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, want, I don't want to talk about the name before the job, okay. uh, but I thought, you know, I'm going to get into the industry. I'm going to give it my all. And mm. part of that was um, my name. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Wow. And, and I want to say, too, you do something very special that I don't think a lot of us do. Uh, you deal with food that is going into mouths. Our stuff, a lot of our stuff, is, is just being presented. So we can get away with a lot more that you can't get away with because your stuff technically has to be edible. Ours, ours doesn't. I use a lot of glue. It's got to be edible, and it's got to be quick to get on the table because I'm busy. You know, I've got I've got to take the kids to school. <laughs> right. I've got to clean because the house. Because you're busy. It's not yes. the, it's not the production. It's just because right. you're busy. No, I'm busy. I've got things to do. Well, so you you've know, you've got so many kids. You've got what we all know them as the Baker's dozen. The Baker's dozen uh, <laughs> used to be uh, the just the dozen. Uh, I adopted the 13th child, mm -hmm. and they've been nothing but trouble. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a nightmare. It's a complete nightmare. You know, before, I was known for kind of a patient. Uh, I, was, I was very meticulous. Now mm. I'm, you're looking at one-sheet meals, one-pan meals. Yeah. That's all I've got time for. I'll grab a, a frozen bag of chicken nuggets and warm it up, and we throw it on, and we start filming. I heard wow. you did the entire um, uh, food styling for the movie The Menu with two kids on your back. Two kids on my back and three kids just screaming, running around the set. Uh, so that's when these reheatable foods come in handy. Oh, good for yeah. you. And I just want to say, I'm sorry your TLC show got canceled after two episodes. You should have got a full run of that show. You All are about a, the bread. You're a working woman with 13 children. We know that's why you adopted the 13 to get the show. Well, thank you. And I'll say the show probably wouldn't have been canceled if I had done the food styling on it, but the show yeah. was about me, and so first? I had to bring in another stylist. What came first, the kid or the show? The uh, 13th kid. The 13th kid did come, mm -hmm. and it was because I had pitched the, the dozen, the dozen to TLC, and they said, we've, we've already got a show like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they've so, got 19, and counting. 19 <laughs> and counting, so I thought, why not do six less, 13? And they loved it. <laughs> classic TLC. You know, Class, TLC classic loves TLC. numbers. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> they love <laughs> different <laughs> numbers and yes. kids. TLC loves nothing more than a number show. I yeah. did. I One time I did it. It was a prank. I didn't want a show. But I walked in and I said, me plus 33. And they gave me a contract. Uh. They, I didn't say what 33 was. I didn't say what was We've going on. We all had a number pitch. I said you plus seven. And they were confused. <laughs> That's how well known this is. We're not even pitching. We're not writers. No. But we can go in and pitch a show because it's a fun little game. I saw an yeah. open door on the TLC lot and I walked in. <laughs> By they the way, TLC lot. They were taking pitches for all kinds of numbers. Pierre yeah. was telling me how he came in and pitched the number four. And he had like a six episode deal. And then the boom of 2015 was over. And they didn't want to do number shows anymore. Mm, they yeah, wanted to do yeah. Little People, Big World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is destroyed our, our business. But we've yeah. cycled back. You yeah. know, this is what I tell every one of my students. If you can think of a number, you've got a show on TLC. <laughs> you teach too. I've got a class. I have also have a master class. Do you enjoy teaching them? Uh, it depends. I mean, up until recently, I loved it. But I've gotten very busy. <laughs> And so now it's just another thing on my schedule for the day. Totally. That's incredible. Well, a lot of people go through your classes because you kind of have this really cool thing where sometimes you'll set up people for the job, but only like once in a blue moon. It's kind of like a casting director's class, you know? It is. In, in a way, I'm also creating rivals, which is so you, <laughs> yeah. I have to be careful. 
Um, I know I'm kind of just throwing seeds into the wind and they're going to grow and potentially take my job. Yeah. So there are things I, I hold back. I don't. I don't reveal all of my secrets. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, no, that's I did good. take your online master, master class, I have to say. Um, I have a contract with Starbucks, some of you know, and I do all the coffee. Um, and once they asked me to do those cake pops, and I about shit in my boots. I said, oh, my God, how am I going to do this? This is food. I do, I do liquid. I do liquid. And uh, so I, um, I took your class, and I loved it. I absolutely loved and it. And you felt like you learned. Oh, yes, 100%. I just skipped to the circle. Circle foods. Oh, right. The circle section. That's yeah. the last 45 minutes. Which is absolutely incredible. Right. And so you were able to do it for Starbucks. Yeah, what I did you? that because I do all their stuff. I do Folgers. I do coffee bean. do them all. Um, but with that one, I needed some. Every once in a while, I got to do food and I got to dust it off a little bit. Well, mm. so what did you end up using for the cake pops? Um, well, I always, famously, and I'll say it to any camera that asks, I use mud for the coffee. Every time you see my work, it is mud water, okay? <laughs> and I learned that trick when I used to grow up in Nashville. All right. So, Wait, where um, do you source your dirt from? Um, I get it from Nashville only. I have one truck. My cousin drives it back and forth to Los Angeles, and it's full of mud. And I use that mud, <laughs> and I make my, my goods with it. Um, and, well, I... I watched your show, I watched your master class, and I learned how to do the colored icing with food coloring and some light confection mm -hmm. and sugar. Mm -hmm. And I put that on top of the mud, put the mud on a stick, froze mm. the mud. Just what? Left where it in does the, sun? the stick enter into the? Oh, this is a the cake mud. pop, honey. Oh, this is the cake pop. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. It's I'm fine. so sorry. I'm so sorry. Please, I'll be better. Oh, <laughs> oh. no, you're fine. You're fine. Oh my God. Oh, is it? No problem here. We're not in the hotel room. That's not like this. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't not what happens. There. Wow, you guys are so different than Pierre. Interesting. Mm. Oof. Yikes. What an icon of the business. I mean, you really are. honestly, really. somebody I look up to a great deal. Well, this is actually really a good segue because uh, talking about mud, you know, I think everybody's interested in our industry secrets. Uh, absolutely. You know, they mm -hmm. want to know what um, we're subbing in for what and how we're doing the tricks. A magician never reveals a secret, but a food stylist can freaking help it. I feel like all we do is gossip we about it. We have to talk oh. about it because they're to. always so interesting. It's we like we're to. kind of... We're kind of uh, Houdinis in the Absolutely. world. But yeah. we're just so gossipy. I had to officiate my my daughter's wedding, and I said, will you take this bride to be your... I'd do all my coffee shots with mud to that, be And your. how did she answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about gossip. <laughs> I just can't shut up about my tools. Um, she said, Mom, shut up. Oh, yeah. that's great. Mm. That's a, So a let's talk about everyone's tricks. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I guess for me, uh, since I'm kind of in the fast food world, every once in a while people will need to take bites, and every once in a while no bites needed. So it kind of depends on the day of the shoot, you know. But a huge trick, what I'll do, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but instead of lettuce, we use rabbit's ears. They're much more... The ears oh. of actual rabbits. The ears of actual kind rabbits. Kind of a meat. Yeah, it's a meat. It's a meat. Um, so they kind of like, if you fry them, they got nice and crispy, and you paint them green, you spray them down a little green, and they look scrum diddly up. That is horrifying to you. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> that is, I wish I didn't know that. <laughs> that's the sort of time saver that we could all benefit from. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, what did you because do? Because lettuce <laughs> is exhausting. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. You have to, to go to the store, pick out a bag of mixed greens. Yeah. Sometimes oh, no. they're brown on the and edges. And the lines, the lines alone. It's so much easier to go out on a hunt and get some rabbits. You know? What did you do when um, I saw your work in that Carl's Jr. commercial with mm -hmm. the uh, lit, the burger? Mm -hmm. um, what did you do when LeBron James bit into that? Was he having a rabbit ear? Yes, yeah, so I didn't tell him, and he loved it. He was oh. very confused. Uh, he said, what is this? And I had to go, oh, it's just lettuce. It's just lettuce. No, LeBron, that was rabbit's ear. Uh, <laughs> Joke's on him. Yeah. And that was really funny, because he, he kept on talking about how delicious that burger was. And mm. half of that burger wasn't even burger. I mean, the buns were old shoes. The cheese was uh, old badge, some sort of German army badge. Mm -hmm. um, and the burger itself, which <laughs> I don't know if you guys have done this before. <laughs> the burger itself, just a burger. Oh. 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 Can I guess what shoe the bun was? Yeah, go ahead. Was it an Ugg? Yes, it Got was it. an Ugg. Can I, guess, can I guess what war the army badge was? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Desert Storm? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a German desert, desert Storm badge. <laughs> Little did people know that Germany had a huge part in Desert Storm. They have a hand in everything. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, so uh, what about you guys? I, I feel like I'm blabbing all my gossip out. 
<laughs> Mrs. Michelle. Brad, come on. I yeah. mean, I've read your book. Look, look. You know, you hear about, I think the one we all know, mashed potatoes for ice cream. Mm, Under yes. those hot lights, you don't want the ice cream melting. I swear by yeah. it. I don't. Uh, that's what? not me. Uh, oh. If you see on film a, like an ice cream melted or an actor looking sick from mm. eating too much ice cream, that's my work. I, uh, <laughs> I will only use ice cream. Wow. wow. Uh, it's a little, uh, to me, I can see a mashed potato anytime. Mm. And I know that viewers are getting savvy. You've got the internet, you can zoom in, you've got the HD, you've got to use real ice we cream. we got to talk about yeah. it. So how long yeah. does the ice cream last it. under those lights? You've got seconds. <laughs> um, and, I'll, you know, we've got the spit bucket, but uh, these actors are consuming a decent amount of ice cream. So we've, we've had people go, let's just say I'm not popular on set. But oh. let me tell you something. I've seen your work in some rom-coms where the when the friend is sad and she's eating and she's eating out of the Ben and Jerry's cart, she looks so fucking miserable. Mm. And it that's got to be it does. It helps Thank the you. Performance. Thank you. That's what I've I've told everyone. I've been fired from a few a few productions. Uh, but I like to see an actor sick. Mm. You oh. do. Um, I can see why that's probably bad on set. <laughs> I'm sure. For but, other people, just playing devil's advocate. I'm a man. I play devil's advocate a lot. Oh, my Thank God. You. <laughs> of course. We need more devil's advocates. Of course. That's what I'm course. always saying. Happy to help, and I always will. <laughs> um, and what were you going to play? What I'm playing devil's doing? advocate that actors probably shouldn't get sick because it'll probably shut down the production. Oh, sure. But <laughs> there are... Devil's advocate. Right. The devil is here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, but we're in a city of actors. You drop one, you can get another in a... You, uh, it's a phone call away. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Devil's advocate, though, sometimes the actor you pick up isn't as good as the actor it's you like found. It's like I'm sitting with Satan. <laughs> <laughs> like, you turn red when you say that. I'm just saying sometimes it's just to, to treat a human life like it's expendable is probably not the nicest thing to do. Ooh, inside. it smells like Lucifer in here. <laughs> it's the sulfur. God, you're mean. Okay, can I call you what I heard they call you on set? What do they call me? Zaddy lasagna. They call me Zaddy lasagna. That's true. <laughs> you can call me that. Uh, yeah, I'm in charge of the casseroles. I'm in charge of the lasagna. I'm in charge of pot dishes. We gotta know some of your tricks. Well, I mentioned it lightly earlier. Glue, 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 glue. It's a lot of glue. <laughs> Elmer's cover. glue. Elmer's glue. Hot glue. Gooey glue. Gorilla glue. Any sort of glue. Incredible. And you gotta keep the casserole together, and then when you pull it apart, you, it's gotta look like it's missing the rest of the group when you take it away. Mm. You know what I mean? You got It's gotta look like it's reaching out to say, don't leave me behind. Yeah, that's Incredible. a good casserole. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we, look, uh, we are basically constructing these things entirely. Entirely from scratch. Betty Crocker, Hamburger Helper. These things, when you make them, I don't know if you made them, absolutely disgusting. Oh, vile. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. horrifying to look at, right? Beige. So, beige. Beige, bad colors, nothing. So when we're filming them, we got to make them look appealing. So we got to start from the ground up. Wow. A lot of imagination. Do the product people, um, like, do you, like, butt heads when you're redoing their recipe? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. They say, look, there's not a single vegetable in this. We don't want people to think there's a vegetable. I say, well, if they don't think there's a vegetable, they're going to think they're eating spackle. Truly. They're going to look bad. You know, the soups also, the soups, they never heat up. A soup never looks the way it does on TV. Mm. No. I, I worked I worked on that commercial about 20 years ago, that really famous uh, Campbell's Soup commercial where the snowman comes in and drinks some soup and turns into a human. Classic. You guys know that commercial. Uh, very obviously, all of us know that commercial. You guys know that oh, commercial. Oh, yes, it's yeah. our good fellas. It's your <laughs> it's, it's our good fellas, yeah. Absolutely. It was it was nominated for a yummy. <laughs> we'll get to yummies later. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put a pin in that because we're gonna circle back to the yummies. We will get to yummies. We will absolutely and get later. to the yummies. Oh, I the hate getting a yummy. Oh, have we all been <laughs> raise your hand if you've been nominated for a yummy? Uh, have I been nominated? Oh my god, come on, Mrs. Butt. Okay, Richard, you nominated for a yucky. I won't say on camera. Well, it's okay. crazy they do it both at the same night. They give out it's the yummy. And, and you're either invited to one or the other, <laughs> yes. and it really And you don't know which community. one it is until you get in the room. <laughs> Should we talk yummies? No, we can't no. talk yummies. Yeah, we'll we this is for later. <laughs> Again, we'll talk about it. But yeah, so it's a lot of glue. <laughs> I build, uh, I, I, I craft uh, uh, the uh, noodles usually out of some sort of cork or linoleum. I, I craft and I whittle away. Sometimes it's wood, um, really hand craftsmanship. Uh, and then for the soups, uh, yeah, I, 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 it's a lot of food dye, it's a lot of blue, and then I, I, I it's sometimes there's some mulch. And can I just say about your work with soups? Yes. Anytime I'm, I'm watching a commercial and I watch 
the ladle go into the soup, pull it out, and I see the soup being dragged back in. Yes. There's nothing more appealing to me mm-hmm. than a soup that is trying to get back into exactly. uh, kind of a mm. yeah, It wants thick, to return home. Viscousy. Right. Exactly. Yes. And it doesn't that's want to be eaten. Slime. It looks desperate. It looks exactly. Desperate. And that's because we mix all the soups with gunpowder. And <laughs> okay. there's metal in them, and we put a magnet at the bottom of the bowl. That genius. And so when it's being pulled out, it's actually being pulled back it's in. It's like you're ripping a family apart, and they're coming back yeah. together. And you got to see the strength of these people that are pulling the ladles up. <laughs> Because, because <laughs> ladles are metal. <laughs> ladles are also metal. I've seen some BTS shots. It's an army of 1920s strong men it from is. the circus. And Big just handlebar mustaches, <laughs> tight black and white horizontal striped uh, bathing suits, and they're just pulling these things. It's really crazy. You know, another thing people don't know about soups is the, the steam. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. come out no. that hot. That is not uh, it, uh, something that we can replicate in time for the camera. And something that Pierre really innovated was, like, some people use smoke for it. He uses his own mouth. Yeah. So you know when you breathe out air onto a winter's day and you see your breath? He has created an ecosystem within his mouth that is so cold that when he <laughs> blows onto the soup, it appears smoking. My God. And he told you he does this? He, he told me he does <laughs> has this. Has he taught you how to do it with your mouth? Um, we're working on it. Oh, How do you God. work on it? Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> How and where do you work on it? Um, um, <laughs> um, um, well, he, well, there's a lot of different ways that we could figure it out. I mean, mostly it's me uh, kind of opening up my mouth and he uh, sort of blows into my mouth so, to figure out so that my mouth can get accustomed to the temperature. And it's back and forth, it's back and forth. This sounds like it has a dirty thing to it. There's nothing dirty about it. Mm. We're just breathing back and forth into each other's mouths. In but I've room, almost yeah. got it. All right. In France, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, for me, for my smoke, I love that you brought up smoke. I have little, um, really, really tiny haze machiners. <laughs> haze machiners. <laughs> haze machiners. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that must be Nashville vernacular. I've never heard it called like that. Yeah. You mean like a fog machine? <laughs> Haze machiners? <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought I was talking to my kids. Oh, Haze machiners. So I got really small Haze machiners, and I put it at the bottom of this Who Starbucks. Who made those? Is it like a NASA thing? Um, that they yes. make them that small? Yes, it's a NASA thing. Well, I love um, that NASA got into fog. It's about damn time. No, yeah. Know? And it's just like some of their some of their people. Um, don't get to work at the top operations, the, the exp- like the really exciting stuff. Oh, the NASA B-list. Yeah, so the NASA B-list people just make smoke and stuff. So they made these little machiners, and, they, and I put it at the bottom of the Folgers cup, and then I dump the mud, and then I go, go machiners, and that machine will go through the mud. Voice activated. Get, yeah. Oh, I'll, I usually, sometimes we have a remote, sometimes I'll say, hey, Alexa, start the machiners. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, Alexa. Yeah. What do you do about smoke? Oh, for me, for smoke, well, the thing is... Or for, heat. For, uh, for heat, yeah. So basically what we'll try to do, is, which is really fun, rather than heat, sometimes our, our food not necessarily needs smoke, but it needs that kind of wetness, you know, that feeling that it's just been on a grill. So what we'll do is we'll get some live fish, and if you cut them open right at the right time, you can just drizzle some of their blood, and it just pops on camera. It's so great. It's delicious for some people. Your food work is so primal. <laughs> well, that's, I'm called Primal Man. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes. You guys yeah. Call my <laughs> Finally, we're getting to it. Yeah, that's it. That's my thing. I'm called Primal Man. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I just remembered everyone in the industry calls you that. <laughs> I just remembered Honestly, that. Honestly, I just thing. remembered too. So I, and I have a, <laughs> <laughs> I have a, a bunch of different things and kind of fun things on YouTube. And uh, basically the whole idea is to kind of go back to the basics. It's like, why use this synthetic food that they're giving me? Why not find something a little bit more fun and natural, mm. um, like an old boot or fish feelings, you know? Um, and that really works. I'm telling you, LeBron James loves that taste. He doesn't know it, but that's what he ate. And he loves it, loves it, loves it. Has he ordered it again? He did. Okay. He said, um, can we do that again? 
<laughs> and people said, oh, good improv. He said, no, 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 I want another. And I said, another great line of improv for this commercial. And he, it was confusing, but I made him another one. And they, they made it to the final cut. Yeah, they made it to the final commercial cut. commercial wouldn't be the same without them. No, it was a genuine reaction from LeBron James. Really enjoying this. I actually have to show up pre-games now to the Lakers and make them a special Sandy. So he's eating a hamburger before every game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's yeah. eating a hamburger it's with rabbits. Rabbit. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> jostling around in there as he's doing... <laughs> <laughs> he's sick to his for stomach. Lettuce, an old badge for cheese, a <laughs> real burger. So he's taste. got war badges in his stomach while he's shooting those shots. Yeah, yeah, he loves the taste. That's well, maybe that's a secret. Enough of my hamburgers. Wow, uh -oh. Mrs. Brett, can I ask you a question? Of course. I read somewhere that you consulted with Disney when they had the Aladdin uh, baguette he stole. Oh, the baguette. <laughs> can we talk about animation work, if any of you work in it? Because I know they consult with food stylists sometimes. I, just, I don't. I just can't see it. You can't see it animation. It doesn't register in my eyes. Yeah. It doesn't okay. look like food. You're very colorblind. Yeah, I'm very colorblind. It, it, it just it's looks like from, static. Yeah, it's crazy when the animators come and they, they say, how do we fake this? How do we fake make this look good? And we go, you can just draw it. Yeah, you, you have the power. You fake, you know, that's the power. But I, no, I say do it real or don't do it at all. And so with Aladdin, those baguettes you're seeing on screen may appear animated, but that was actually, th those are shot practically. <laughs> Disney so you inserts think they those. shot it live action. So it's a I don't CGI think, I watched the cameras. And then they drew it on top. The budget for that movie. <laughs> I oh, I won't even say it, but, it, but look, you thought they were animated. I did. I really did. You were really fooled did. by my work. I, w I wouldn't push her. She's clenching her her knees right now. She <laughs> well, looks really angry. So don't look, so don't don't antagonize. Aladdin her. was nine, what ninety three, and this is the first time it's been brought up. I mean, <laughs> I'm it, so it puts sorry. me on edge. I'm so sorry. Does Mrs. anyone Brit. feel guilty for deceiving the public mm -hmm. in terms of, of, of the food looks too real, but you this know it's point. not? Like, does it ever break your heart that people are watching this food and thinking it's real? I know for a fact no one has ever been satisfied by a casserole. No one has ever <laughs> made yeah, a casserole. you have blood on your hands. You have not been to the South. You do not know. I don't care if you're the devil advocate incarnate. You have. N you don't know that. I've the casseroles I'm hawking. No one's liking them. Okay, I'm not talking about homemade. Your casseroles are glue. I'm not talking about homemade casseroles that Aunt Mima made. Okay, <laughs> those are delicious, and I've had them many times because I actually have an ex-girlfriend who's from North Carolina. Okay, what? Then I'm sorry, I've experienced I, I misspoke. It, yeah. I misspoke. What? See, so before you judge me, maybe learn a little <laughs> bit about so my background. I'm so sorry, I had no idea yeah. that you had a girlfriend. I, I, don't, I didn't Carolina. think I had to walk around talking about it, but yeah, I have an ex girlfriend from North Carolina. So before you I'm cast so your decisions on who I am, I think this entire discussion would have gone differently had we known that. So I'm so sorry. Well, if you had been more upfront with it. Yeah. Oh, so I'm supposed to wear that around like it's my whole identity? I think that's fine to mention at the top of the podcast. I have an ex girlfriend from North Carolina. Yeah, I feel we like we found your ourselves. thing. I feel like you found your thing. That's not my thing. My thing is casserole. <laughs> no, it defines you. No, it's not defined me. My ex-girlfriend does not define me. It's just part of who I am in a massive way. Well, then why did, yeah, why did you bring it up? Because I wanted to prove that I know what a casserole okay. is. Yeah, you're trying to impress us. And exactly. I apologize. I sincerely apologize. You can continue with what you're saying. I'll never assume your ex-girlfriends again. Thank you. I'm just saying I feel a little guilt. I feel a little guilt because I know what people are eating, and it's not as good as what it looks like. Okay, so you feel like you're leading people to a casserole. I am. I'm selling casseroles. People are still buying the green bean casserole dips and the and the Campbell's soup. When's the last time you've had a Campbell's soup and you've enjoyed it? Mm, last night. You oh. enjoyed it? I was headed home from set. I didn't have anything to eat. <laughs> I'm driving. Traffic's crazy. I just popped open a can and... Ate it on the go. <laughs> oh, room temperature. What room flavor? Temperature. A forced gazpacho. Um, it was a chunky chicken. It was a chunky <laughs> chicken <laughs> at room temp. Oh. Room temp. Uh, and you enjoyed nice it. I really go. hoped it would oh, have I been tomato. It. That would have been uh, acceptable. A uh, tomato? It's essentially a drink. I mean, that's your category. Tomato soup. Mm -hmm. I need a chunk. <laughs> you need a chunk. If I'm on the go and I'm eating, you need driving. Chunks. I get right, it, I get right. It. I, I don't. Got a question for you, Mrs. Bread. Um, do you ever confuse on set with at home? Are you ever accidentally set uh, food styling for your kids and bring really bad food to set? I'll tell you. The worlds are blurred at this point. I make the food at home and I take it to set. And if, if it's not good enough for set, then I walk. <laughs> I, I so mentioned you make it from your house, you transport it all the way. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes. And then you walk if it's not... I walk. So you don't take any notes? I've been doing this too long to take a note. Okay. 
Okay. Have you has any has any uh, like anyone high profile ever given you a note like have, have they been offended by like John Krasinski? Look, John yes. Krasinski <laughs> is full of notes. The Quiet Place set was just a mess. Loud. <laughs> you remember the egg scene? Oh yes. yes. Yeah. The big plate of scrambled eggs. That that was corn, by the way. That was actually I just scrambled little, corn. That is a little secret. If you've got to do eggs on film, uh huh, puree some egg uh, corn. And it's bright yellow. It's it can stay out as long as you want. Mm. Mm. No, no worries That's about incredible. it going Genius. bad. Or, right, but John was there were so too many notes. Mm. That's why I didn't do Quiet Place Two. Oh, mm. and that's why it bombed. And then you think that had why. nothing to do with COVID? The, I did watch the food. I said I don't believe this food. <laughs> right. You, well, food, food, food Island has a direct uh, show in the box office, and I believe mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Oh, of I really course. Do. But Absolutely. that's so interesting. You said that because um, getting get confused with home and work because I don't cook. Wow, you don't. My you husband do cooks. Yeah. Oh, your husband. Do you know cooks. how to cook? If you no, have to, no, couldn't scramble an egg for you. But you could pour a drink. Oh, I can pour a mud like nobody's mud. <laughs> what's your What's your take on latte art? Oh, that's just painting. I'll paint. I can paint. I can't cook, but I can paint. So is it mud on top? Are you still using like a froth Yeah, I'm mud? using mud with a little bit of um, confectioner sugar, and I'm taking a watercolor pen. If you've seen watercolor pens, and I'm doing that, putting it on top. I've got a question, because you work with all beverages, right? Mm-hmm. Stuff that isn't just coffee. What do you do... When it's like a Sprite or a Shirley Temple, you know, something yeah. that doesn't hit that mud coloring. Yeah, well, I, I don't want to be misconstrued here. I don't use mud for everything. If I have to make a martini, I'll make a martini. I'll put a little sprinkle of mud in there so it's mine. <laughs> so that's your little secret. <laughs> yeah, of course. It's my little baker's pinch, my little love letter to myself on top of that martini. Mm. But if it's not with mud, I'll use the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's either mud or the real thing. Okay. Yeah, if they need Sprite, I'll buy a Sprite. <laughs> so martini no... is literally, you'll just make a martini <laughs> yeah, and sprinkle some mud on it. It's different than with solids because why fake the drink, not just get the real drink? There's no difference. You know, I can't make a Sprite more bubble. Sometimes, sometimes I'll make the Sprite extra bubble fill if well, they want it. I do know sometimes you put some sort of glycerin on the outside with a, with a with a with a beer or something. You like you got to spray it with the yeah, so when it looks I was like younger, it's moist. When I was younger, I would lube up the cup, mm-hmm. yeah, so it would just like sparkle. And Slip I did out that, of the actress. But you're hands. too old for that. <laughs> no, I did that when I was younger. It's just a different different life I live now. Mm. Mm, so just yeah. to be clear, the only liquid you won't work with is coffee. No. Okay. I'm allergic to it. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's your thing. Okay, your thing. You find your okay thing stop it. looking for people's things. Does yeah. anybody else cook well? God, I wonder what my thing is. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel like your identity has taken a backseat yeah. Yeah. to this yeah. hotel room. Yeah, God, I have no idea. I mean, I wish there was something defining about me other than the fact that I'm an apprentice to the biggest food stylist in the world and I haven't been out of my hotel room in two years. Oof. What's Look, like the best thing he's taught you? He has taught me that every M&M is actually a Skittle. What? Oh. What do you mean? What? Every in what single <laughs> M&M in the world is actually a Skittle. Don't expand on the sentence. Tell me what you mean by it. <laughs> every single, 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 single one. Just add words. There. <laughs> Specifically adjectives. So Pierre um, has a lot of friends at, um, at Nabisco, at Nestle, at um, the major chocolate companies, and he says they're all in cahoots. They said, how do we trick people into buying, paying the same thing for a different product and making them think that it's a different product? How do we do that? How do we pull the wool over somebody's eyes? And he, granted, three drinks in at this point when he's telling me this. Oh, God. Um, (laughs) Basically, it's a conspiracy. So what are Skittles? Are, Are Skittles also Skittles? Or are they M and M's? So, uh, no, the Skittles are Skittles, <laughs> but it's a rectangle square situation. Every M M&M and okay. M is a Skittle. Not every Skittle is an M M&M. and M. Oh God! Because <laughs> they're all Skittles. Yeah. Okay. That's it. This is very interesting because it, it dives into something I like to not look into, which is the greater conspiracy of food in the world. You know, mm-hmm. we we like to say we are food stylists, we're builders of food, but the people that make the food that we eat. They're also technically 
food stylists because mm. they're creating a food that we're ingesting. Right. And does that freak anyone else out that we maybe know something about the grander scheme of the Monsantos and the Frito-Lays of the world? Oh, yeah. I mean, when you start really looking at it, the conspiracy goes deep. And that's honestly why I try to use more primal stuff, more basic stuff, you mm. know. Why turn to regular Angus beef when I have the privilege and the honor in hunting season to go find a deer and turn that into an Angus beef patty? That's and an honor. That's an absolute that's nice. privilege mm -hmm. and it's an absolute honor. How would you do an M&M on screen? So for me, an M&M would probably be deer pellet, deer dung, mm -hmm. and if you if you cover it with a little bit of raccoon fur, I think you'll get the aesthetic that you want. Oh, that colorful raccoon fur. Yeah, a beautiful course. dark raccoon fur. Like a right. gray M&M. And mm -hmm. how would you, Mrs. Bread, do an m and I'd, I'd go to the store, grab it in the checkout line, and uh, <laughs> dump it in the bowl on set. That's so interesting. I so didn't know upset? you could do that. <laughs> because I've been very clear, I've got a lot on my plate. <laughs> I, I'm not going to. I'm not, you gotta go. You can go. I'm probably gonna have to get out of here. <laughs> um, I do have a job this evening. What uh, is it? What What's is your it? Job? I don't I, look NDAs, but I will say Christopher Nolan has got some. He's got a, a new movie. Oh my god! He's doing some reshoots. Let's wow. say you're doing the food for Oppenheimer. Let's say Mr. <laughs> Oppenheimer uh, has a little feast. A little feast that uh, you're going to be very surprised. I think you're going to like what you see on screen. Can you just tell us one thing that just he's one eating? One thing that he's eating. Spoil it a little. Chicken tenders. Oh. Holy what? Wow. That classic World War II food. If you've chicken read tenders. any of the books, if you've read any of the books, you, there's a, always a chapter on the I've tenders. read Dan Brown's Oppenheimer. He's definitely a lot of chicken fingers <laughs> well, in Dan Brown's Dan, Dan Brown does get into the chicken finger conspiracy. Absolutely. Goes yeah. all the way to the top of the uh, Catholic Church. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Oppenheimer. That's what that movie's about, right? Of course. <laughs> The Pope uh, directing the atom bomb. Uh, Incredible. Yes. I knew the atom bomb was the Pope's fault. We all knew. We yeah. knew it. Well, that's a food industry secret. That's a food stylist secret. <laughs> yeah, 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 we didn't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of an exclusive to we this podcast. We don't discuss yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What was the first food everyone ever styled? Ooh. Mm. Oh. That's good. Professionally or, or amateur? Um. Uh, what? I mean, I, th I, think, I think it can be amateur. I think it could just be the first one that that made it pop for you mm -hmm. as a career? Well, one time I uh, was eating uh, ice cream with my sister. No. And she uh, had a cone and I said, wait, stop. Turn it a little bit like this. Turn it like that. And then I took the ice cream on and put mashed potatoes on it. Oh. And I said, wow, that looks better. And she said, well, you fucking idiot, you ruined my day. And I said, yeah, but I got the shot. And I got someone to take a photo of her. How old were you when you said, yeah, but I got the shot? <laughs> I was eight years old. This is a true story. Wow. That's this incredible. Is a true story. I feel like I've always been destined to be a food stylist, really. Insane. Wow. I, I can say I had a, um, a a plate of chicken in my hand and I was running across the playground and I tripped and fell and the chicken tumbled into the dirt over and over and over and over again and into the wood chips mm. and it landed on the plate once more and it looked perfectly breaded and seasoned like mm. a chicken parmesan. Mm. And then I looked at it and I said, I think I can fake more stuff. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what year wow. was that? How old were you? I was nine years old. Wow. Mm. It starts young with the FSs. It That's does. incredible. I think for me, I was a PA um, on La La Land. <laughs> Pretty reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you, you shot you're, up You've fast. skyrocketed. <laughs> the top, yeah, I've, I, I, my life has been fast. But I was <laughs> a PA, and they asked me to be in the car when Emma Stone, at the opening shot before the dance number, spills coffee on her shirt that she's going to the audition for. Mm -hmm. And I was under her legs, quite literally in her batch, under the car, wow. waiting, waiting for the cue. And then in my ear, they went, go coffee. And then I squirted it right with my hands. I put a piece of coffee in my hand. Oh, you're allergic to it. A piece of it. That must yes. have been terrible. Like, no, it's scary. Really but the way I made a piece of coffee sit in my hand and me flick it, that made me feel power. I had yeah, power. Yeah, you're defying the laws of physics. I had power suddenly, and I went, oh my God, I need to start quick, and I need to start moving. Did you have an allergic reaction? Yeah, talk about power. 
Yeah. The whole production got shut down. Yeah, well, I mean, it was just, I had a huge uh, allergic reaction. Um, I think it was the first time a production got shut down because of a PA. They could have just sent me away. Mm. Just let you die. Yeah, that's nice. Didn't. And I've always said, Damien Chazelle is always all for one and one for all. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> what, what any, a guy. everyone says about Such a him. team yeah. player, though. He's a team player that's, that's a nice, uh, that's another food stylist secret. <laughs> Damien Chazelle is I all heard, for one. I heard the PAs have to tell Damien Chazelle to go away. Yeah, so um, we tell him when we're wrapped. <laughs> well, and I did work for him once, yeah. We told him when we were wrapped, okay. yeah. But that was what got me in there. What about y'all? Mm, I did a piccata on uh, The Majestic. Jim Carrey's The Majestic. Oh, this yes. was summer of 97. Who could forget that piccata? Oh, I heard God. CPK's chicken piccata is based off of your piccata it in that is. movie. Thank you for uh, just pointing that out because yeah. CPK has been riding my coattails too long. <laughs> but this was at the time that Jim was, uh, you know, he he was dabbling in the dramatic arts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't have a comedy piccata. We had to have, you know, a mm. real world, mm. wow. one you would see in a restaurant, uh, CPK, and I just got to work. This was the first time I had touched food. So, it, you know, it was a challenge. But I, you know, it, I went, I came in through the back door, let's say. Mm. And you all remember the piccata. Oh, we uh, remember. Of course. That, yeah, I mean, we still talk Absolutely. about it. You may forget about the movie, but you remember Absolutely. my work. On my sets, we always say, and remember the piccata. Is it up to piccata standards? You know, Thank you. You set that standard, Incredible. Brett. Incredible. You set that standard, Brett. I guess for me, uh, I was up in the Alaskan tundra, and mm. I came across, unfortunately, a older bear had died. And <laughs> you knew he was older. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was, it, it felt natural. He, uh, <laughs> it felt did he have a cane? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he dropped his walker. Yeah. <laughs> it felt natural. He had a cane. He had old glasses. <laughs> wow. Graying hair, but not all gray. Mm. And so basically he had So fallen. maybe, okay. Yeah, no, go ahead. What did you want to say? Well, I was going to say you knew he was older, but if you didn't have all gray hair, then maybe it wasn't fully natural causes. Well, my theory still believes that it's an older bear, you okay. know. Um, so thank you, but maybe stay in your hotel. Yeah, room. way to be devil's advocate. You look like a freaking little devil man running around. Trust hey, me, you don't hey, want to go down the devil's hey, advocate route. Hey, hey, I got grilled hey. earlier, and I feel more charbroiled than sorry. a painted on. Now burger. that we know, <laughs> now that we know your ex girlfriend's from North Carolina, we you guys are like no, you. No, we apologize. Yeah, I'm so sorry about your that. Ex. You um, never know what's going. So something's going through. But basically, this uh, <laughs> old older bear had started decomposing on this rock, and okay. uh, kind of the fur had covered over this rock. And I said, "That looks." like a meatball. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. And that was kind of the first moment I realized, you know, maybe there's something here. Mm. Um, maybe there's something here. And Crazy you saw food in that. <laughs> what sounds to me like one of the most wild things any human being could ever see regarding <laughs> It nature. also feels Awful. like a Disgusting. personality Awful. test where like, what does your body think when you see a dead animal helpless? Yeah. And you just thought of food. You saw a career. Yeah, yeah, I saw a career. Right. I saw right. opportunity. You know? Well, and... Uh, I mean, it, your your work for Buca de Beppo got you your first yummy. I think it's time we talk about the yummy. Oh, oh we have to talk about, about the yummy. yummy. Is it time? It's Let's yummy time. We should talk about it. Yeah, so Buca de Beppo awarded me. They they presented it. They were so nice for presenting it. I won best uh, at best spaghetti uh, for the year of 2014. Um, it was uh, basically based off of that original bear that I saw. Um, and you were up against that animated movie, um, with the spaghetti and the animals. The Lady and the Tramp? Yeah, where you up again? <laughs> yeah, so the remake, yeah. Yeah, the remake. <laughs> the 2014 remake of Lady and the Tramp. Awful movie. <laughs> Off offensive. Of they really took Tramp to mean another thing. But the spaghetti was good. <laughs> Very sex negative movie. <laughs> sex negative. Sex oh. negative. So it was, uh, and usually the yummies work just so you're only up against one other movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the yummies, uh, no are, knows why. the yummies are very into, into face-offs. Uh -huh. Head to head. Head to head. Well, what about you guys? How did you get your yummy or your yucky? Um, I mean, speaking of face-offs, we all remember the 99 uh, yummies. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the peach. Uh, the peach and face-off. Yeah, the peach. The uh, Nicholas Cage eats. 
that was the my peach, peach versus James and the Giant Peach. Yeah, well, yeah, and that movie came from behind because it was released in '96, and <laughs> I don't know, maybe there was some sort of a problem with the submission. It's a real underdog it, story. Oh. <laughs> well, that's the thing about the Yummies. they you can honor always submission. <laughs> they always honor submission if you screw it up or or it goes yes, in the wrong. Gets part. lost in the mail. Or <laughs> yeah, whatever. yes, uh, gets lost in the mail. Well, because they move around so much because their funding keeps getting cut, so yeah. they have to move offices, so <laughs> yes. they can't blame you if you send it to the wrong. It's like office. a PTA club or something. Exactly. But right. you did the peach in Face Off. I did the peach in Face Off. I also did the peach in James and the Giant. Um, did you do the peach and call me by your name? Yeah, because I thought you resubmitted later. No, uh, peach and that one I actually had I had to take a step back. <laughs> I uh, was not working with fresh pro- produce at the time, and they mm. wanted something juicy. They needed to see Chalamet just uh, get his teeth in there, and I didn't want anything to do with it. Right. I knew the cum stylist on that. <laughs> oh, he's so good. He's, he's great. So good. So, Sorjo? Sorjo. Sorjo. My ex-husband. What? What? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was he like? Um, full of cum. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! So don't tell me it's real. About. Please don't tell me it's real. I'll leave some things to the yummies and the yuckies to say. <laughs> to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about everybody else? Uh, well, Pierre got a yummy in um, 2019. Um, and he, uh, turned it down. He was the first person to, uh, turn it down. And he, he told was, you that? Yeah. He told me that. He told me he was protesting the system, mm. um, and that he couldn't even show up. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. That's what because I thought. Because he was so I like angry. I read a I remember weird he... article about him not being allowed to come. Yeah. Out. He sent a Farrah Fawcett impersonator to accept it on his behalf <laughs> and write read a statement. And it was a statement. And somewhere over the course of the next year, I'm going to figure out what that statement means. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we couldn't understand it either. Because it was written in French, and then the, you could tell the Farrah Fawcett impersonator she didn't, didn't read speak French. French. Yeah. So she yeah. butchered the it. The pronunciation. Ooh, dog <laughs> shit. Yeah. Dog shit. She said, Jack Septe, this award. Uh, uh, poor la premiere food. Yeah, exactly. And it just didn't make any sense. No. Nobody knew. Exactly. What about you? Have you been nominated yet? Well, no, I'm not really allowed to take credit for anything um, because I'm still a junior. I haven't um, earned my certificate yet. I haven't passed the test. I haven't gone uh, ex- like gotten my degree from Pierre yet. Pierre is an accredited university. He's the first human man to be accredited. <laughs> He Are went, you sure? Did he just tell you that, or do you have documentation of that? Well, he got a surgery so that he couldn't lie anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that he's lying about anything. Okay. Um, listen, I feel like you guys are really suspicious of Pierre, but he's the best in the industry. So no, I don't I understand why he would lie to me. I think that everything is above board, and I think that, frankly, everyone is just jealous. Well, he certainly I- couldn't lie after the linoplasty. <laughs> Well, yeah, the linoplasty sounds legit, um, but I will say this. I think Pierre's like my work. I think Pierre thinks he's a cup of coffee, but he's a cup of mud, honey. Isn't that a compliment for you? No, he's fake. Wow. Well, Pierre... I think he's using you, honey. I have to tell you this, because Pierre has been listening through a microphone in the top of my head this entire time, and he is coming for you. And There's a mic on pretty. top of your head? Yes, of course. Why do you think I wear this giant bowler hat? <laughs> oh, my God. That's a big mic, too. <laughs> That's a road. It's a road. <laughs> it's a road mic. Well, Pierre wanted the best sound quality, and you just can't get it from a lob sometimes mm. when I'm crickle crackling around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, bowler got... hat is a perfect place to put a road mic. <laughs> no yeah. crickle or crackling <laughs> at all. No one knows. I, I, I gotta mention, I, I'm just proud of my awards and accommodations. I, ever since I moved into the casserole uh, district, I haven't b- really been getting anything but yuckies, as much <laughs> as I try, unfortunately. But I was known, I got two big yummies in the 90s for the Totino's Pizza Rolls commercial, uh, when the kid eats the Totino's and he screams, I love Totino's! Oh, it was yeah. a big one. And then, oh, of good. course, the Sunny D commercial where the kids are looking in the fridge. Uh, that was me, too. And the Sunny D was really fun. It made it look tasty. Uh, I've always been good at making things that are bad look good. Mm-hmm. Sunny D, yeah. really, really awful stuff. Might as well be toxic waste, but we made it look tasty. And Totino's re- pizza rolls, they look like, you know, a dried out cockroach when you cook them up. I will say, can we just pause and say, your most famous yummy ever was when you made the Capri Sun kids into silver liquid. Yes, yes, yeah. That was my uh, 
Frankenstein moment. And you, you know, you got a teen yummy for that. I got a teen yummy. They gave me a, a, a big scooter. You know, oh, as you know, the teen yummies big, come with the big a giant scooters. one. Yeah, big scooter. Kind you of unusable. Yeah, unusable decorative scooter. I can't put anywhere in my house. It's in my yard still. Uh, but yeah, I got a teen yummy because I said I want to treat uh, how I treat food. I want to treat people like that. And I turned people into silver liquids, and they shot around the space. Mm -hmm. And it was really Incredible. exciting stuff. I was really pioneering. I gotta hear about your yummies. You have such a long list. If you're not What's too your busy, one? if you're not too busy. Well, I mean, teen yummies. I've got a closet full. Um, is that, you know, that's, you one or two, that's two them. or three scooters. That's two or three scooters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it a walk-in closet? It, it was. It was a walk-in closet okay. until the teen yummies. Littered. With um, <laughs> But going back to the Majestic, of course, I was nominated and then won. Uh, face off, uh, face face myself with the James and the Giant Peach mm -hmm. uh, was awarded two. Did you feel a rivalry with yourself when you were faced it's up against? It's hard not to, uh, especially you know there was the 1996 me and then there was the 1999 me. And what I had feel changed? That. Uh, the 99 me was much worse. I was in a bad place, mm. uh, so there was some jealousy there, and there was uh, the competition. Uh, it, I went to a bad place. Fortunately, they were able to supply two awards, um, <laughs> at which I was able to melt down. They said it was a tie, and you won the tie? I won the tie. <laughs> uh, gave two acceptance speeches. Never heard of that in award culture. I know, and it was the last time they did it, because they had to uh, cut the show short. Oh, wow. Yeah. But I, Damn. you know, I made history. And I'm proud of it. I'm not. I'm not gonna back down. Mm -mm. I'm not going to. Don't you dare. Be embarrassed that I won two awards. Uh, so no, congratulations. Thank on you. That. That's, that's, that's all I'm looking for is a congratulations. I have no to sit kidding. here and just kind of <laughs> okay. wait oh, and look again. at everyone. Oh, here we okay. Go. Okay. Okay. Just, Michelle. Uh, here we go. Michelle. You do not need to be here if you don't want to be. But that's why I'm here. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> Let's be honest. You won the most yuckies out of all of us here. Can we be honest? Because we're hiding your your secrets. I don't consider a yucky a loss or a shame. I consider it a lesson to learn. And, uh, you know, when you win a yucky, you're, you've obviously done something disgusting on screen. You've made people sick. You've made people gag. And a, a response is better than a non-response. I'll just say that. Okay. And the award ceremony is beautiful. Yeah, it is. They, so, they put well. so much more money they, into the yucky. They do than a they good do. job. Elegance. Because they feel bad, you know? They feel I get <laughs> nominated for a yucky every year when I work on cough syrup commercials. And that's just a part of the trade. Yeah. Oh, wait to that food. call from your agent. A classic food people have to eat cough syrup. <laughs> well, they don't know. Medicine stylists, are, they're worrying about IV bags and stuff like that. Oh, you yeah. have to go to school for so long to become <laughs> a medicine stylist. <laughs> no, and they're in so much debt for those school bills. It's so are. sad. It is crazy. And the pressure at medical stylists. And the school. hours. Mm. Mm. Do you oh, remember Lord. when you told your parents you were going to be a food stylist instead of a medicine stylist? Oh, oh God. God. Oh, the anger, the disappointment. You're not going to be anything. You won't make any money. You think you're going to win a yummy. Mm. It was really tough. They said that if I, I made an agreement with my parents, you know, if I don't make it big as a food stylist by the year 2025, I have to go live in a hotel room with a medicine stylist. Mm -hmm. You have and to become a doctor. Yeah. A food stylist doctor. I'm going to become a food, a food, a doctor, a doctor stylist. <laughs> <laughs> a doctor stylist. Awful, awful. That's oh an entirely gosh. different department. Or those paper stylists. I feel bad for oh, them. I feel bad for Trying them. to make the paper look real. <laughs> That's I terrible. feel bad for the clothes stylist. What, what? What job even is that? Don't I get know. me fucking started on them. Mm. What do they even do? What do they even do? They make clothes out of what? Fabric? No, mud. I assume. Oh, interesting. <laughs> oh, it's mud. I'm guessing. I can't think of anything else you would make I, it with. Oh, what is in these drinks again? Interesting. I thought it was just I, water. because I like... thought it was. I've, I'm the Leo DiCaprio of yummies. I've never been nominated, and I just poisoned all of your mud coffees because I want to kill you all and take over the industry. What the hell? Oh, okay. you you what the hell? hell? So they're it's not only mud, but they're poison. <laughs> what? You went I knew. I, I tasted I started to feel lightheaded that it was just... There had to be a tiny bit of mud in here. There's mud in there, and it's lethal mud. What the hell? Mud. This is coming out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists. Answering the question, now that's why we call it show business.
Good night. Artists on Artists on Artists on Artists is an improvised Hollywood Roundtable podcast created and performed and produced by Kylie Brakeman, Jeremy Colhane, Angela Giratana, and Patrick McDonald. AOAOAOA is a Sugar 23 podcast. Michael Mayer and Michael Sugar, executive producers. Liam Billingham, producer. Production support by Angelo Ristano and Anthony DeFrancesco. Music is by Gabriel Pontong. The opinions expressed on this podcast do not reflect the opinions of anyone who works on it, not even the performers, because this is an improvised podcast and we're stupid. Full video versions of AOAOAOA are available on YouTube, so please like and subscribe and leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Hollywood.